Hey everybody, it is Caleb, welcome. In this video, we're gonna be talking about quitting C++. No, not me, that was a clickbait title. We're talking about someone else quitting C++. And what, what I could do uh, to give you guys some advice, I guess. I don't really tend to do advice videos because I don't really feel like I have a lot of advice to give, but I just wanted to share a quick story with you because we have a comment from, um, I'm not gonna really share his name actually because you know, I just want for privacy reasons, I guess. However, the comment's good. So we're going to read the comment and I'm going to talk about it. But before we get started, there's a train and we have a sponsor for this video, Embarcadero. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise-level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. So the comment is, at the moment, I honestly feel like giving up. I was fine all up until I got to chapter seven, which by the way, my videos don't have chapters. Um, so I don't know if he's referring to a book or just video number seven, but whatever. A race and had to make a tic-tac-toe game. My brain simply cannot comprehend all the steps necessary to make this stupid game. I honestly envy you guys who understand this coding. I honestly feel so defeated because I was not able to turn in this assignment before the last day of the semester. All right, so this is something we have all felt. Okay, I feel that same way. So first thing, try not to be envious. I mean, I know I'm like pretty boss, but like it takes a lot of time to, to learn this stuff. And I feel that same feeling looking at other people on YouTube or other developers, or even when I was in school, like I put so much effort into all the assignments and I would see people who care way less than me but like, just get the assignment done. You know, like it drove me crazy. But it happens and that's just the way life is. Uh, and here's what I replied with and then I'll kind of go into my response a little bit. Hey, I feel you. Like, I, I know what he's saying. Like, I don't like feel. <laughs> Never mind. So my advice is always, always turn something in. Even if it doesn't work. Not turning anything in says, quote, I don't care about this assignment. Turning in a broken program says, quote, I care about this assignment, I just don't know how to solve it. I remember when I first learned C++, I had a similar situation. I worked on some stupid issue for like two days and never figured it out. I hated it. It happens. Submit the code and move on. Smiley face. So to explain my story here, I went through a university program and that's actually where I first learned C++. I was actually working as a developer at the time, but I've never used C++ before. So it was a pretty big learning curve and very challenging, not so much because it was too hard for me because I knew I knew I had that confidence level that's needed and I was intelligent and I, I work hard. I was able to learn some other programming languages, but part of my problem was I was stretched too thin. So I was working an internship that was, you know, almost two hours away from where I lived. So I drove there and drove back uh, a couple times a week. And I was in, you know, full-time school, also married. So a lot of responsibilities were pulling at me and I didn't have the uh, time and probably just the energy and motivation to dedicate the effort required to learn these skills at the level they, they, they should be learned. So, I had an assignment where we had to read from a file or read from user input and do some formatting of that and check some values and then do some output. And I remember visiting my parents and you know, everyone's hanging out, having a good time. I was sitting on the couch working on this assignment, getting the same issue for hours on end. And I ended up working on this assignment for like two days or something. And I got absolutely nowhere. I don't know if I actually cried but I remember the feeling of my soul crying. I felt it cry. So the agony of being unable to finish this assignment was just unbearable. But I still turned that assignment in and I'm sure I got partial credit for it just for turning something in. 
So if you're in a similar situation, never, ever, ever just not turn an assignment in. Because honestly, if you just turn the assignment in and it's broken, but you have the main function and a couple of includes, it looks like you put some effort forth and you might get 25% or 50% or even like 100%. Um, in fact, there's a story I have of a friend. He wrote an entire final paper that he spent a lot of time on and he had the final version and he saved it as a new file name. So when he went to turn in the assignment, he accidentally turned in the original one that had nothing on it. A few days later, he got his grade and he got a 100%. He looked at the assignment there and he realized he turned in a blank paper. So he could have just turned in that blank paper and saved all that time writing that paper to begin with. Now, that's not gonna happen in most scenarios, but the reality is teachers have to grade a lot of stuff and the most important thing thing to them is that the students are, you know, applying themselves and turning in assignments on time and so forth. So if you turn in anything, they're more likely going to give you at least something. My second point of advice is that this is a field where the amount of time you spend studying a specific challenge or a specific problem needs to be balanced with time spent studying general programming principles and things that are just going to make you smarter in that language or in that industry. So in in my scenario, I spent two days trying to read input and write to a file, which like looking back, it's like, wow, that's really not that hard. Why was that so hard? But it was just so new to me and using C in and C out. And it was just really confusing. I should have instead spent an entire day just studying C++ input and output. You know, I have a book here, this C++ book, and I remember having this at the time. I should have just went to the, the chapter on input and output and said, hey, I'm gonna read this entire chapter today, and I'm gonna write out all the code examples. I bet you if I did that instead, I would have better understanding of C++, input and output, and then I would be able to just modify the examples a little bit to get it to work for the application for my school project. And I probably would have been able to finish that project in those two days and been a whole lot smarter for that next project. And that was a problem because I basically ignored this class as much as possible. So we got deeper and deeper and deeper into C++ that I didn't have that prerequisite knowledge that we learned from the previous projects because I was not putting in the effort to do the actual study of the language instead of just trying to finish the next assignment. And it's really hard not to do that, but so many people approach programming. I need to finish this tic-tac-toe game. I need to turn in this application. I need to do this quiz or whatever it is. Instead of first thinking, okay, what skills can I develop that'll make doing all of this easier? And in the end, that's actually going to save you a lot of more time and it's going to make you a better developer in general. And I bet you if you don't quit to this person who wrote this comment, if you don't quit and you keep learning and keep learning, one day you're gonna look back at that coding, that coding problem and be like, wow, this is easy. I don't know why I struggled with this at the time, but that's part of the magic here. It doesn't really make sense and you don't know how to do it until you do know how to do it. And at that point, it's no longer hard to you anymore. So that's just you know a little advice, my opinion. I'm not an expert, I'm still fairly new to this stuff because you know you could study this stuff for 30 years which is longer than I've been alive so don't be discouraged just keep at it turn that assignment in move on to the next one and just try to be encouraged about it take breaks reach out to people ask the professor go to the professor ask him to explain this in detail don't leave until you understand it and just keep on coding don't quit you got this